From the American Indians, to the trappers, to the traders, to the early explorers, to us, pemmican, one of the greatest survival foods. iconic survival dishes ever put together. Started a long, long time ago, it did. Pemmican. Now you may have heard this, you might have even seen it on an old western or an old explorer show where they were eating pemmican. Now really the word derives from the Cree and it means pemmy, which means fat, which back then was probably bison or elk, moose, as the Indians did, and even the explorers that explored all the great Northwest and the Northern Territories, they would just take two rocks together and just pound this meat till they could make a really, really dry powder. They would take suet, which is the fat that encases kidneys on an animal, whether it, like it be a bison or a moose or elk, whatever you were using. And they would chop that fat up and then render it down over low heat to where you got all this beautiful golden tallow that come from it. But then they got to think, we could mix some choke berries with it, maybe any kind of berries that we could find, and you let it dry for about an hour, and you had pemmican. So today we're really celebrating the American Indian culture, and when it was passed down to the frontiersmen, the trappers, the people who explored the West, but even to the South Pole, the North Pole, this pemmican was with them all. So we're starting off, since I don't have any lean meat around here, because looking over here at him, he don't look too lean, and that one ain't got enough meat on him to keep us alive, so we'll just keep them two around. A bottom round or a top round, round is always pretty lean meat. And you can see that there's not a lot of fat on the inside of this, and there is a road map to where we should cut first. So we're gonna cut that right down this seam, because we need to try to get all the fat we can off of this. You can see it's got a chunk right here, so we'll just go ahead and trim this off. Try to remove all the fat you can, because fat is really what would make this stuff turn rancid in the end, and we don't need none of that. Back then, it would have been most of the time bison, and they would cut these strips out of them, and we'll just cut one that's a little thicker than what we're gonna end up with. And you would just flatten this meat out. Now, if you're a hunter and you've got some venison, some backstrap, whatever in there that's really lean, just use it. But you can see the grain of this meat is running this way. So really, it would be best if we come back across here and just slice this as paper thin as we can. And when it dries, it's even going to be more tender. And you can use a dehydrator or you can go in the oven. We'll show you both methods here when we get started. See, we started out with two roasts there. We ended up using about probably close to four pounds of roast when we cut that in strips and trimmed the fat off. So you wanna make sure that you, when you've got a finished product here in your bowl trimmed and sliced, you have at least two pounds of lean meat. We're just gonna put it on a wire rack. One will go in the dehydrator and one will go in the oven. And uh, oven's a little quicker than a dehydrator, but the dehydrator's really gonna get more of the moisture out than the oven will. Now, when you're talking about putting it in the oven, you know, the lowest setting that my oven will go to is 170 degrees. When you slip that in that oven door and you shut it, always just take a pot holder and just shut it to where there's just a little bit of air circulation in there. It's gonna help it dry out faster in that oven. It's probably gonna take you a minimum of at least three and a half to four hours. And when you get that jerky out of there, you wanna make sure that when it just breaks like a cracker, it is that crispy. That way it's gonna be a lot easier to grind up or pound whichever method you wanna use. The dehydrator, the same way, but it's probably gonna take longer. It's gonna be probably close to eight or 10 hours in a dehydrator. And I should have told y'all this when we started, when you go to slice that meat and you're gonna make this pemmican, it's best if you go ahead and put that meat in the freezer and let it set about 45 minutes in there. You can slice it a whole lot thinner that way, or if you've got a meat slicer, you can use that. The Native Americans, when they were making this so long ago, they might have added choke berries to it, something like that. They don't grow down here where I'm at, so we bought some dried blueberries and dried cranberries. When you're looking at dried fruit there, it's not really got all the moisture out of it. So we put these on some wax paper cause they fall through the grates on that dehydrator and it took them about 13 hours to really dry.
We're going to put all this in this blender. Now, the first time I did this recipe, I just used a little magic bullet, but it took it forever. And you can put them in there whole, but I'm just going to take some of them longer ones and break them up to where I know they'll grind up a little faster. You might ask yourself, why are we saving these pieces? We have a lot of good help scattered around camp today, so we'll put them back over here for the time being. Get the lid on it. Wrong direction. Houston, we have liftoff. You can see when we got through with that, that's pretty much like a meat powder. That's what we're after. But now we're gonna grind these berries. They won't grind up near that smooth, I promise you. Good set of scales is really necessary. We're gonna weigh this out so we'll know exactly where we're at. Coming at a whopping 8.7 ounces it did. Now you can see there's a little powder to them berries, but when I made that the other day, I ground them up to where they was just ground plum up. But I like to leave a little of them like this way because it gives a little chewiness to it. Now we need to weigh the tallow out to have about 8.7 ounces. Then we'll heat it up, mix it all together and make us some pemmican. Dutch oven is here getting hot on the little Camp Chef burner it is and starting out with a really low heat because you want to make sure you don't burn that oil to begin with. We're going to leave a little out because we can add to it if we need it. When the Native Americans made this, it was really from probably mostly buffalo fat and then buffalo meat. Now, I just got me some really good clean white fat that I could get from the local butcher down here, and most of the time they won't even charge you for it. I think we probably had three pounds all together. Put it in a pretty good sized stock pot, put it on low heat, and it's gonna take it a while. When that tallow quits bubbling, you've about rendered all the fat out of that meat. Let it cool, then I strained it into a mason jar, and we is good to go. And most of the early pioneers and everybody that made this were actually just taking this probably and just forming it in their hand to a loaf or a ball. We're gonna put it in here, let it get good and dry, that way we can dump it out. They would claim that usually uh, about the size of a, a Reese's peanut butter cup, but about that tall, was close to 2,000 calories. They even canned this stuff so many years ago for expeditions. A lot of the Native Americans too that I did research on and look back for, they said, you know, we traded for sugar and they would add a little sugar to theirs for a sweetener. When this stuff sets up and when it gets done, and we're gonna set ours in the icebox to quicken up the process, which is the refrigerator, you can actually break part of this off. It's so good to cook with. You've heard of beef bouillon cubes. Well, now you just break off a little bit of this pemmican. You could put it in some stew. You know, the buffalo was the main source for it. He provided the meat, he provided the fat, but he also provided a skin bag that they could dry out to carry this in. And they would make pounds and pounds of this because this is what's gonna help you get through the winter. So this was something that was not only a survival food, but it was also something that you'd take when you were out on a long hunting trip. This pemmican at room temperature, usually wrapped in like a wax paper or even brown paper sack and sealed up tight, one to five years just sitting out. But you can put this like in the cellar at your house where it's a cool dark place, it's indefinite. In Canada, the, the old settlers up there actually make a soup or a stew out of pemmican with this and whatever vegetables you could pick up going along the way. I think they call it rababoo. Now, I know that's probably good butchered up the word, but it is a famous soup there. You know, pemmican was a great food to get through hard times. Have you ever had pemmican before? I have not. Just break you off a piece and go to town there. It's very dense. Mm -hmm. it's it smells like like old uh, beef um, stock. It's not bad, you get that beefy flavor. It's beefy and then you get the little cranberry, it's oh. nice, and then at the end, it's not so nice. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean. I mean, if I were needing to survive, it would be, I mean, you're eating it up, you like it? I mean, I've, 
I've eaten lots of worse things in my life. I could get by on this. I can remember when I didn't have nothing, I would have been glad to have it. But Oh, and you know what's so funny that you made this is because I just finished a book called The Endurance. A lot of you guys might know about it. But it was about the um, 1914 Correct. South Pole um, expedition with Ernest Shackleton. And then we also watched the um, documentary on it. Documentary. But it was very good. Yes, and it was. they ate pemmican, and thank God they did yeah. because it got them through some hard times. Yeah. So, yeah. I, uh, so I appreciate the concoction. I'm glad that I don't have to be eating it. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna peace out. This is not too bad. This is better than first batch. Was it? Mm -hmm. Well, we'd sure like to thank y'all for tuning in and watching this episode. I love the history episodes to go back in time and really show you about what happened and really how it's evolved through all of this. And uh, it is uh, something that I think we should be very thankful to for all the history that's been passed down to us. But as always, a very special tribute to all the servicemen and women and all the veterans who have kept that old flag of flying over camp. I'd like to leave you with this quote from Ronald Reagan, who said, we are one nation under God, but when we forget God, we are a nation gone under. Remember, let's be a better neighbor, and it all starts with me and you. God bless you, each and every one. Get in here close. I'm going to give you a big hug, and I'll see you down the pemmican tree. Well, they'd even trek fur up north. They would take just two weeks. So two weeks. Culinary is going to have a fine time licking that bowl. A quote from Ronald Reagan. The car went by. I think that's what he said. Yeah. Uh, Lulu? A Meiji? Cletus is sleeping. Cletus! Cletus! You want a snack?